Good afternoon, folks. I have the fun job of keeping you interested after lunch session. Um, so uh, my name is Ranjit Das. I'm the director of Amazon Recognition. I've been with Amazon for four and a half years and, and you know, built uh, recognition with the team, launched it at reInvent last year. Um, what I have been really uh, been uh, involved with in the last few weeks at least and, and months thereupon is uh, the nonprofits and how we can have a meaningful impact with AI and the nonprofit. And that's been a, a really uh, personally uh, useful for me. And, and I thank the team for uh, involving me in these discussions. So what I've been asked to do today, before I introduce uh, Patrick and bring him to the stage, is to talk to you about what AI is and how it could potentially help whatever domain you guys are trying to work in. Um, so if it is about what AI is, let's start with the definition. And I think the definition really is that uh, AI is defined in different ways by different people. And it depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to an academic in an uh, institution, they'll talk to about AI in a very different way. We like to define AI as a much more simpler, a set of systems or services that would need tasks that involves human-like intelligence. And I'm going to try to explain that a little bit in, in, in context. So you would hear a lot about AI and algorithms, right? And, and so if you look at traditional software development, which a lot of you might already be familiar with, um, and I, when I started uh, in my career in software development, uh, it was a very simple world. I'd make an observation of a system. I'd write up that observation as a set of code. And I would deploy that code, and that code would execute. So a classic example is that if you wanted me to create a software for you which added numbers or did any arithmetic operation, I would take the input, I would do an arithmetic operation, and I know the, what the answer would be, and I'll write that as a logic, and I'll deploy the code. So now you'll say 2 plus 2, and the answer would be 4. Simple. Well, now let's pose a problem for you. If I were to predict how many of you sitting in this room, after leaving this room, would give a one-star rating out of 10 for my talk, it would be a hard task, because there is no meaningful algorithm, there is no operation that I could easily bring in to say, to predict who of you would give me a one-star rating. So how would I solve that? How I solve that is I will collect data on numerous such meetings, maybe thousands of such meetings, collect all the demographic information of all the attendees, collect the demographic information of the speaker, collect the information on topic, collect the, whether you had lunch before and lunch after, whether you flew in on the day before or we you had good night rest, whether you, you know, fought with your spouses and partners or kids or whatnot, have all this information as data into my algorithm, which will be some sort of a classification algorithm, and the data of your rating, assuming there's e ratings that are, we are talking about available for those meetings, again as data, and now we'll train an algorithm. The output would be a model. So we'll start with the data, and this is why you'd hear a lot about, even Patrick talk about this, that data is the king here. It's not about human being, it's not about logic, it's really about collecting a massive amount of data which tells you what the inputs were in the past and the expected outputs were, so that the system now can use this data to train the algorithm. Once you have trained the algorithm, the output is what we call in our parlance model. And then the model is then going to do a prediction. So going back to our example, if I had 10,000 such meeting information, I would bring this into the system. I'll bring the ratings from each of those meetings into the system. I'll tr train some sort of a uh, predictive analysis algorithm with that data, and then I would have an, a, a, a code that would be spewed out that could, with a high accuracy, predict who would rate me with a one versus who would rate me with a five, right? And the good use of these are recommendation system, predictive analysis, whether you're going to have an event happen or not, uh, whether somebody is more likely to take your service or not. And, and this is where AI is extremely powerful. So as I talked about, it's really about data, right? It's really about data at scale. Because imagine, for me, I'm in the world of image. So the simple task of trying to train an algorithm, a classification algorithm, to learn whether there's a cat or a dog or a car in an image. Let's say those are the only three classes I need to recognize. I would need to bring images of cats, human annotated, 
that, i.e., a human being has confirmed that there's a cat in this uh, image, I would need to get equal number of images of dogs, where human being has identified there's a dog in this image. I need to get equal number of images of cars and bring all of this into the system, and then the system would learn by itself. How it learns is that it goes through a process. It says, okay, I am predicting that this is a cat. Oh, by the way, the human being told me that's a dog, so I made a mistake. So I'm gonna go back and see where I made a mistake and fix it myself until I reduce the error rate and I get to the output that I'm expecting, which is a cat, right? So you need a large amount of data for training these systems. So think in your business, in your domain, in your service, what data from the past, from the present, systems that you have, the data that it should be collecting and you're not collecting, think of that as you leave this room today. And this is where AWS plays a big part, right? A lot of you guys, how many of you uh, use AWS for your services or business? A lot of you, right? Most of you here. So we see a lot of existing data in AWS. We are seeing a very aggressive migration of data from traditional data centers to AWS, while we are seeing brand new data structures creating in AWS, data that didn't exist before, right? Uh, startups like Airbnb can disrupt an industry that's old because they're built on AWS from day one. So once you do the data, well, as I said, the next step is for the training. And this, you need a large amount of compute power. You need elasticity. Why is elasticity important? Today, to train my models, I need about uh, millions, hundreds of millions of images, right? And in the early days, it used to take us two, three weeks to train a model with 100 million images. And I needed, let's say, 500 servers to do this training. Now, as you would get into this domain, you'd realize that you don't need training. Training is not like a banking transaction. You do once and then you're done with it. And then maybe you get new data in six months, nine months, three months, you do a full training again. Now, the cost of keeping this 500, 800 servers sitting there is something that most people cannot afford. And that's where elasticity is important. You want to get these servers, train quickly, and you can give up the server so that you don't have to carry on this cost forever. And then the idea is that when you try to use this AI machines, AI systems, there are a lot of platforms, a lot of engines, a lot of code, a lot of library. And you know, if you're not in the technical domain, you have people like me whose primary purpose of life is to confuse you, right? To keep you involved by saying, oh, you don't know, so you know, bring me in for two years and I'll solve your problem, which is really should be done in 30 seconds, right? I mean, that's how I made my living. So there you go, pre-built images, right? So everything is configured for you. Everything is there. Everything, the, 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 the magic of setting up and configuring these systems are taken away. Um, and then once you have the model, so now you have the data, you've trained, uh, trained the algorithm that you've chosen. You have a model, which is nothing but a binary code. Now you need to deploy the model so you could do the prediction. So now I would like to deploy the model. So for all the conferences that are happening today, I would like to know who would rate my speech one to five. And for all those who are one, I'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation after this meeting. So uh, that prediction would happen also needs compute. Now, where think about smarts, right? Think about the problem as, as autonomous driving. Everybody has heard about it, right? It's the future, it's already here, a lot of people are trying it. Imagine this dilemma of standing in front of an autonomous driving, which has to decide whether it breaks or not, while well, you're in front of it, and if it needed a connectivity to a cloud or a data center. I don't want to be that person. I, raise your hand if you want to be standing in front of a car, if it has to decide whether it breaks or not by talking to a cloud. So we believe that true smart, true AI would be when it's end-to-end. -end. It's also on devices, it's also on those cars, it's also on your palm, on your hand, right? So the decision doesn't only need to be made on the cloud, where this decision that I talked about earlier, whether you guys are gonna rate me one or five, I don't need real time, right? I could do it on the cloud, that's perfectly fine. But if you were gonna slap me, I would rather know immediately than waiting on the cloud to tell me, because you would have already slapped me by then, right? So those decisions, how you do it at the edge, on the connected devices, they are very, very important. So how do you do that, right? And getting into a bit more of the technicalities of it, how you do it is that you move data, you need to get data, collect data. My request to all of you who are business owners or tech owners, there is no data 
that is bad. Even if you don't know how the data can be useful today, you'd figure out new ways to use it tomorrow as new algorithms come up, as new techniques come up, right? Today, we are discussing internally that Amazon has had a lot of software engineers. We have written a lot of code. We do code review. We say this code is right, this code is bad. We fix others' bugs and all this stuff. You could imagine a future where we could probably define an algorithm which should help us look at a code and find out if there's a bug in the code and fix it because we have all the data. Now, if you didn't store on the data, it would have been almost impossible to train that algorithm. So you don't know what data you have or what data you're generating today could be useful tomorrow. So make sure data is there. And how do you get data? Look at the set of services and features, the breadth and depth of services and features AWS has of bringing data in. I really like, how many of you have heard of Snowball? Some of you. For those of you who don't know, Snowball is a very rugged appliance that AWS ships to your business so that you could connect it to your high uh, bandwidth network, move a lot of data in and ship it back. And it has a shipping label on it and it just magically shows up where we want to. So now moving massive amount of data from your data centers, which not be, or remote locations, or your field agents, which might not be all that well connected, is easy now because of this sort of breadth and depth of services AWS has for moving data. Once you move the data, you need to store the data, right? These are bits and bytes at the end of the day. Imagine, at the end of the day, a lot of us had a living because we figured out how to represent stuff in zeros and ones. How funny. Um, those data needs to be stored. They need to be stored either in, in files or in databases or in data warehouse solutions. And again, these are all the solutions that AWS has today where you could store the data that your business is generating or your services are generating. Once you have all this data in, you need to process the data. You need to compute. You need to figure out how to process the data. A good example is I was uh, in charge of a uh, uh, Fortune 500 retail based on the East Coast who mostly sell books. I'll leave it at that. Um, and um, we had a really big problem where we were trying to estimate uh, where the shipping would happen and uh, numbers were, our, our predictions were all off. And uh, we looked at it and we realized that the problem was that billing address was swapped with shipping address. So instead of doing the assessment of where more shipping would happen, we were using people's billing address, which is most of the time very different than you know, if they're shipping something to their family or to their uh, offices and whatnot. So once you have the data, you need to process the data. You need to compute data. And that, again, look at the set of services and, and capabilities AWS has. Uh, again, the depth and breadth is important. Um, and, and once you have that, well, then the next step is you could do AI, right? And then this is where we believe that we can help you guys in your whatever your uh, destination is in that journey. Uh, and, and particularly in the nonprofit, we've already engaged with a bunch of you, all working with you guys already. There's a lot we can do here because the AI enablement is new features, right? So now you can all of a sudden new features, new capabilities you could have. Alexa opens up doors which were not available to, to uh, people before, right? Um, new experience and product categories, brand new experiences. Like if you think of the Amazon Go store, it's how many have heard of Amazon Go store? For those who haven't, it's a checkout free shopping experience. Ideal for people like me who are socially awkward, don't like human interaction. I could walk in, pick up whatever I need, come out, I don't have to talk to anybody. Um, and then breakthrough advances. This might be interesting for a lot of you here. Uh, I, I like this example. This is a using computer vision to make a prediction, uh, early detection of diabetic complications. Right, from retina scans. Now, doctors can do it today, but they need your state to be far more advanced for them to physically recognize these patterns from your retina scan. This is a, remember talked about the car, right? This is an autonomous driving company that have trained their model on AWS and then have deployed the model to the cars. Because again, you don't want the decision making or braking reliant on a cloud connectivity, right? Um, we have our own product. If you look at Alexa, the, the enablement of Alexa is AI. It's about AI allowing you to talk to a, uh, talk to a speaker like it's you know, uh, your uh, neighbor. Again, you know, I, I have a three-year-old at home. Um, one Sunday, she was really talking very sweetly. I walked in, I said, what's happening, honey? And she's like, I'm not talking to you, Papa. I'm talking to Alexa. Uh, very rude, but uh, very effective. Um, 
And then uh, Echo Show, it, it, takes, it took in the voice and then it added the visual aspects to it. So now you can interact with, so you ask for a recipe. It's one thing for the voice to talk, talk about the recipe, but another thing for the Echo Show to show you the recipe, to, the, to show you the uh, constituents of what you're gonna build. Um, and then Amazon Go, as I talked about, this is again a complete innovation that is possible because of AI. Now, why, how could you use AI today? And, and this kind of gets me to this uh, really nice code. You guys can read it. It's here, the future is here, and, and our job is to make sure that all of you can control the future. It's not only in the hand of this few data scientists and PhD. We want to enable this future in all of your hand. And so whether you choose to use these services or not, it's really not important. The reason I, I want to show you this is for you to live with this idea of how you can build your systems or influence your organization to build systems. When you're build, building AI systems, if you have big data scientist team, you need infrastructure. What does it mean? You need compute power, you need elasticity, you would hear the word GPU, CPU, all this funny stuff. That's at the infrastructure level. You need infrastructure access. If you um, if you don't want to deal with infrastructures, if you don't have the data scientists, and if your data scientists are not hardware engineers and don't know how to configure their machines, you need to have access to engines. You need, and you'll hear a lot about this engine. You know, Google talks about TensorFlow. We support TensorFlow in AWS really well. We are ourselves investing on MXNet heavily because we think it scales very well. But there are other solutions like Cafe. Facebook recently supported Cafe too. They're all available in AWS today. So it's not only the uh, solution, the open source MXNet that we are investing on, we are equally investing on other solutions. Um, on the top level is platform. And the platform, the idea is you don't need to understand machine learning at all. As long as you know what data you have, you bring in data, you show it to the platform, platform generates output for you that creates AI models. And finally, the stack where I have built is managed services. If you need to recognize people's faces, if you need to compare faces, if you need to do voice interaction, you need to create lifelike speeches, you have managed services. You don't need to deal with any data. You don't need to deal with any machine learning expert. You just need to deal with APIs, right? So think of AI at this kind of layered case. And depending on your teams and your organization's capability, you might choose to interact at the different level of the stack. And these are all the sort of problems we are seeing getting solved with AI, right? Be it logistics, be it recommendation, be it Q&A, uh, a simple thing, AI, you know, I think there's a use case we talk about, ARP and Patrick could uh, talk about this, is this notion of using Lex, which is basically the voice interactive system, to do registration. So seniors a lot more, uh, no, it's not ARP, it's uh, American Heart Association, I'm sorry. They used, a uh, AHA used uh, Lex, a voice interactive system, for their customers to do re registration. Instead of filling up complex forms and clicking and swiping. And the reason is, if you think of what we learned first is to move, and second is to talk. So any services that are using these basic skills that we have learned would likely be more successful, more viral, than typing or swiping, which are not natural to us, by the way, as it so happens. So look at all the sort of things that AI can solve today. Risk, is there a certain transaction higher risk for your business or not? You could do it today with AI. Um, with that, we'll leave the Q&A for the late. I'll invite Patrick to come over to the stage and uh, take on. Thank you, Patrick.